Welcome everybody. Um, I think we're live everywhere. I haven't checked my phone or I've only got my LinkedIn set up next to me. Mac is joining us uh, in the studio as my co-host and um, we have our first guest, Amanda Hughes. I'm just going to stop the um, <gasps> iPad. <laughs> Look at that puppy! <laughs> oh, oh, that's just made my day. <laughs> Not, not that I'm not happy to see you as well, Amanda and Joel. <laughs> happy to be here. Hey, thanks for having me, you guys. Oh, You're welcome. A pleasure. And um, so, Amanda, we've been following each other for uh, quite some time. I have lost count on how many months exactly. But um, so for all of those who don't know what you do, and that's probably a fair number of the audience, um, tell us tell us about you and uh, how you got started in sensory gated art. Okay, um, my name is Amanda Hebert Hughes, and I am an openly autistic painter. I'm also an author of a children's book series. Um, my main passion, though, is my sensory gated art, which is a new genre. And I have been painting this a uh, very specific way since early in 2019. Um, I could dig deeper, but do you have more detailed questions you want me to hold up? <laughs> we, we, we probably will have more detailed questions, um, <laughs> especially from the bearded gentleman below us. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> trying to point out the obvious the the elephant in the room with the massive beard yeah thanks <laughs> so Excellent. yes go for um, it joel also who who be, who be, who's your friend which one which one is this i've seen a number of your dogs but yeah i have two dogs this is the one that always gets oh he's kind of scared because oh. the... <laughs> this is the one that always gets on the camera because he's always by my side the other one She's, I told Jill, she's a little bit of a diva. She's kind of like a cat in a dog's body and she loves to bark all the time. So because he's so well behaved, he gets to be here with us. Say, this is he gets all the Rambo. Light light. Oh, <laughs> look at that haircut. Oh, what a gorgeous pup. How old is Rambo? Rambo is, oh gosh, uh, four. I think he's four. Mm hmm. It's amazing and, how animals can just get us sidetracked all, all together. Hey? <laughs> they're so wonderful. He's he's my chief snuggle officer. That's how he has a job here in the studio. <laughs> love it. Love it. Oh, Bobo, look. Chief there snuggle go. officer. <laughs> Gorgeous. Thank you. So you, you, you've been doing sensory gated art for, for, uh, for um, three years now. I think three years. Uh, I, I think four, maybe going four on years. four at least. Yeah, because it was early 2019. So okay, so we'll almost so there. We'll, we'll be hitting the fourth fourth yep. year. Um. So and you and you've uh, had the, the exhibit. You've had the exhibits. You've had the art exhibited in. Uh, I uh, had my first. My first, you know, serious exhibit is actually open right now. That's why the pieces that you see behind me, aside from the the rainbow one right here, um, those are all uh, older pieces. Those are from 2020. You could see the red, orange, and uh, chartreuse. Well, it's really vermilion pumpkin and chartreuse right there, to be specific. Um, I've, I've been painting this way specifically since early 2019, and I didn't even know it until 2021 that it was a brand new genre because, you know, I was doing art full time. I was really committed to it. I was really committed to this style that I felt really just passionate about. Like, this is how I want to deliver visual information. This is the best way I want to deliver it because it just, it just deconstructs down to the most valuable visual pieces of information. Um, as far as I'm concerned, um, lines, texture, and the colors are very specific. I am very, uh, what's the word? <laughs> I am a color mixing, uh, I don't wanna say diva, but <laughs> I'm a color, color mixing scientist. I'm really into getting the colors spot on because that's such a, 
a core trigger to the brain as to sending a message and information. So I didn't realize this was a new genre until uh, 2021. I was in the autistic community, uh, building friendships with autistic professionals, uh, reading as much information as I could get my hands on because I'm a late diagnosis for autism. I didn't know I was autistic or get my diagnosis until I was, uh, I think, 34. So I was very late diagnosis. Wow. So I was already a full-time artist when I found out I was autistic. So I'm painting this very specific way and uh, learning about the autism world and other autistic adults, reading, learning, listening, just immerse myself in it, that I came across a blog written by Burnett Grant called Sensory Gating. And in that moment, I read the blog of sensory gating is a cognitive process that every brain does to filter the information that we take in through the five senses. And I realized in that moment, that's the process that I was actually doing when I paint. I perform the sensory gating process for the brain and then I deliver the end result. So I realized this is a new genre. I looked, nobody else was doing it. So I called it sensory gated art. And well, that just it. takes my, my first question right out. out. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's great. It's, uh, um, you know, if, if you look at, uh, and for those of you who haven't seen uh, Amanda's collection, I'm just dropping the, and you'll see my eyes go up because I've got another screen here, but I'm just dropping a link to your portfolio. He's being uh, modest. For people to go and have a look. Other screens. Uh, <laughs> um, but I've just dropped in the comments the, the link to your collection. Um, because initially when I came across uh, some of your art and I saw it here on LinkedIn, I thought it was all straight lines and uh, and different colors. But um, that, you know, when I went into the, your, your collection, I found that, you know, it wasn't all straight lines. There was one specific uh, called the San Antonio Sky, um, which for me was like, you know, because you can see the textures and you can, right. you know, but you've got those different colors that come out in there, in there as well. Now, that's um, interesting. You anchored on that one, Max, specifically, because that does not qualify as sensory gated art. That's abstract. I was so just going to ask, how did that it. fit in? Yep, that one was just a day that I just said, I'm just going to do just textures and I'm not going to do the clean lines. And so a piece like that, um, if you have that pulled up, a piece like that does require more work from the brain because the lines aren't clean. You got to determine where one color begins, one color ends, um, that kind of thing. That's not sensory gator. That's, that's abstract. That piece actually did sell uh, last year. Um, but the textures, I loved playing with the texture on that piece because in all sensory gated art, there are texture blocks and that is really enriching for the brain. So I'm, I'm just going to uh, drop that on there, Joel, so that you know, somebody can see that. Um, and you can see the share screen. I don't know if uh, if that's active. There you go. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and that's the one we're talking about now. So that one sold. Um, but uh, one of my favorite pieces is this one just over here, your Latin collection, because it's quite incredible how, you know, different shades of black and gray are, and then the textures in there as well. Um it just makes such a pleasing, comforting kind of view to the eye at the same time. Absolutely. Yeah. See, you're picking up on that. Exactly. Sensory gated art is very soothing because it, it delivers something enriching and calming all at the same time. And that just came naturally to me. It wasn't like I set out one day and was like, I'm going to invent a new art genre and, you know, maybe it'll really take off or so it was nothing like that. It was this is how I'm going to paint. This is how I want to paint. It was just all Damn. very instinctual. And so I was, I was painting that way. And uh, I, I didn't really have a way to explain it to people that well, because I, I didn't even really understand what was happening yet, but I was really committed to it. Even when people, you know, didn't really connect with it. I'm like, I don't care. You know, I might die and people will never acknowledge or recognize my art and I'll be like Van Gogh, but this is the way I'm meant to paint. And I'm not, I'm not, 
I'm not saying I'm not open to developing, but I, I was very confident that this is what I was supposed to be doing. And then, you know, all the information came later, like I'm sensory gating and I've captured it in a visual art form and this is a new genre. And it, uh, one of the things, I don't know if you've noticed this, Joel, but for me, it was, um, you know, when you have that light bulb moment and I was looking at the yeah. art and everything else and um, and then I, I, I realized your initials and I was like, so when you look at this art, you kind of go, ah, and I was like, <laughs> it's going to be <laughs> A-H-H, you know, straight after it. You're so, the first person to pick up on that, Mac. Thank you. <laughs> I, I've been wondering if I should like, should I leverage that or take advantage of that? It's the aha moment. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Um, love it. Absolutely love it. It's all, uh, it's all meant to be. It all kind of fits so nicely. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, it does fit so nicely. I just had to drop. I, dro I had to drop the. Um, I was. Uh, I was a bit um, distracted there. I was dropping, finding your link on my iPad and dropping it into the uh, chat because some people I noticed couldn't see the link. Mac, I don't know where your one went, but um... yeah, very strange. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, very strange. So, um, Amanda, was the. Um, was the uh, was was that the initial um for wanting a better word vision with your with your um initials and the uh, of course as Max says the aha moment. <laughs> what was the question, Joel? What was the uh, was that when you how how um long how when you when you, when you first started was that when you started doing A H H was that the um first time when you where Max said the aha moment or? <laughs> I guess so. I mean, I, I knew that when I first started out, I was trying to figure out how am I going to sign my work, you know, because I want it to be consistent, but I also want it to be like visually pleasing. I don't want it to be, you know, a thing on the, on the artwork that just doesn't go with it. So over time, I eventually developed this symmetrical type signature, which actually looks really good now with my art. But I always, yeah, I always from the start wanted to make sure I incorporated the A-H-H, but then I fully write out my name underneath Amanda Hebert Hughes so that people know what the A-H-H stands for. But yeah, the first time I wrote that, it was like, ah, you know, my art <laughs> is calming. So it is the calming sound. So what a coincidence. <laughs> yeah, that is, that is, that is um, well, that's a happy coincidence. It really um, is like it's meant to be. So, uh, Amanda, I had a question for you. You know, you, know, you you mentioned that you had this late diagnosis um, uh, with with autism, and you know you've been on this uh, road of discovery, um, and uh, you know having this whole um, uh, you know sensory gated art new kind of style that you you've brought out. Um, and you know, from personal uh, experience, I know that art is a, and they, and, and it, it, it's a very powerful medium for people to be able to express themselves. Yeah. Um, and for thousands of years, you know, all the different artists that have come out have expressed themselves, and there's so much involved in the story and the history and the emotions that go go into it. Um, how since you've been, you know, you've you found that you you are autistic. How is that, you know, has there been any kind of shift in how you do things and, and, and what has helped you um, through that process that, you know, other people that are neurodiverse that are watching this maybe give them a, 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 some inspiration to go and delve into going and, you know, um, experiencing art and, and seeing how that can help them with expression? That kind of felt like three different questions in one. So I'm going to try to... <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try to. It's one of the me. things I'm, I, I can be quite bad at is I'll ask like a multiple questions. Like I'll pick my favorite question. <laughs> <and> <laughs> <for it>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, when I when I found out that sorry I'm sitting on my cord. I told you guys it was gonna drive me nuts. <laughs> um, so when I knew that I was autistic, uh, I was already an artist, and I thought what better position for me to be in than to be openly on to be open about my autism you know yeah. about being autistic because that way not only does it give people kind of a window look into my world as an autistic person 
Um, art's a really effective way to do that, as you mentioned. Uh, but it also being openly autistic can inspire other people, you know, like who are autistic or who have this horrible stigma about being autistic. And, um, and for other young people who are autistic, you know, having more prominent figures who are really excelling in their fields and uh, have a great network and are looking out for each other. Uh, just having someone like that to look look up to, to me, that's totally worth being openly autistic because I, you know, I can, I can be openly autistic. It's, it's um, other people are in positions where I feel like it's more risky for them to be openly autistic because they, they could lose their job or something like that. So if I can use my platform to keep breaking that stigma, it's, it's, it's really easy. I, I, I'm, it's a privilege to do it. Um, and the people I've met, you know, you guys are just an example. Everybody I've met is pr just pretty awesome. And the autism community is amazing. And um, yeah, that's, that's all I'll say about that. We know I could probably keep going. Um, <laughs> but I'm trying to think about what's your, your last question about people getting involved with art for their autism. I'd say if if engaging is in art is something that, you know, you feel a, a need for or connect, you know, art isn't for everybody to be doing. Um, but I think the arts in general certainly are something that everyone should be you know, dabbling in, whether it's just, you know, for themselves, for their own enrichment. Uh, it's certainly a great way to express yourself without having to find all the words. And I know I seem, you know, pretty eloquent and I have all the words, but that's because I understand myself so much better now since I found out my, my, that I was autistic. I was a, when I learned about autism, I was like, I'm learning about myself right now. So now I can express myself better because I understand myself better. I think, um, you know, just running through some of the, the feedback that you've given there about the ability to be openly autistic. You know, I know Joel and I have discussed this on a, a few different um, uh, platforms and different interviews uh, with regards to, you know, how it's, you know, in today's day and age, when we're supposed to be able to be more open and honest and more accepting that still it's such a, you know, the stigma is quite huge around uh, autism, especially those who don't understand autism. I mean, one of the, the statistics that came out in one of our conversations was the fact that something like 68% of hiring managers would avoid hiring somebody with autism because of the fear of not knowing how to deal with somebody that is autistic. So the education side of things of, you know, being comfortable to to bring you know, on board somebody with autism as an example. And, and we had people in the comments going, well, you know, when is a good time to let my boss know? Like people being afraid to actually bring that up um and ultimately it, you know by bringing that up it could enable their environment uh for them to be able to really prosper and do better work but because of the fear of talking about it they're putting so much additional pressure on themselves to try and perform in a world that's not enabling them yeah um so you know i guess what is your message to those people that mm are living under that cloud of not being able to express themselves and come out openly with uh, with autism. I tell them, you know, we're working on it. Autism advocates like me and Joel and even you, Mac, you know, we're working on it. We are really, and, and our, our numbers are really growing and we're really unified. And, you know, that movement is, I see it moving forward. And I'm you know, I'm, I'm as loud about it as I can, not in an angry way, but in a, <laughs> hey, I'm autistic, you know? <laughs> I'm not angry. I'm not just, I'm autistic. And it's pretty awesome to be autistic, actually. And my art is such a cool window into it because what it, it allows me to do as well. Okay, so neurotypical people, or I should say neuromajority people, they can enjoy my art because it is calming, because it does the cognitive 
sensory gating process for them too. It's universal that way. But also it gives me the opportunity to be like, hey, by the way, processing sensory information is a major component of being autistic. Let me tell you a little bit about that. And then they have the, then they kind of, they're a little bit open and like, oh, this is interesting. I'm not going to lose anything by learning about this. And then they get to see how autistic people really take in the world through a microscope and have so much information coming in at us. We're constantly considering so many possibilities of meanings and interpretations. And, and that's a lot that we're processing behind the scenes and they just don't know it. We're not as good at ignoring stuff like they are. Right, Joel? Yes. So it's a really great tool for me to start that conversation and be an openly autistic artist and just use my platform, you know, as far reach as I can. That's awesome because, you know, it's all about education at the end of the day. And uh, I love the fact that, uh, you know, both of you, as an example, are, are using different mediums, you know, Joel through music, you through art, um, to be able to educate people. Because one of the, the biggest frustrations that I've noted, um, you know, I'm uh, dyslexic as an example, and apparently, you know, well, I know my daughter's a, a got ADHD, and apparently I have uh, ADHD tendencies. Um, so, uh, you know, one of the things that I found really frustrating because historically, you know, and I love the topic that we have, I mean, different, not less is, is the whole kind of thing for today. And I, I, I started finding that the way the world um, puts certain things or frames certain things is, is so disabling uh in a in, in in a big way so as an example um you know i live in a in an area called hartfordshire and, and there was a um the, the 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 universities and councils were putting on a um uh, an event for people with learning difficulties and and, I, and when i looked at it i was like it's, it's actually not learning difficulties it's people that ha they learn differently and, and and now you're putting them in this category where you're saying um, you know, people that are disabled uh, mm -hmm. with disabilities. And I'm like, well, actually, no, it's the environment that is not enabling. And this is where I, I believe there's a massive change. So I'm loving the way you are both, you know, sitting there and advocating, just being able to be open about the differences um, and not just because somebody's different, all of a sudden saying, you know, uh, and and I, I've said this to Joel before, it's like telling a goldfish they're disabled because they can't climb a tree. Okay. It's like, come on like you know it's it's the really accepting our differences and, and being able to see the beauty they're in um yeah. i think the problem with the traditional yeah. approach that's been up to now with autism is the is the belief that well if we just apply enough pressure to autistic people we can get them to be more neurotypical or <laughs> more or less autistic. Like they really believe that. And I think that's why they're to a point where they're just really frustrated. And this is the perfect time for all of us adult autistic advocates to be able to step forward and be like, did you know you can actually learn about autism from an autistic person? Like, really? <laughs> and, <laughs> and some of the people that I've met, um, oh, this is interesting. I'm, this is what I was going to mention. When I was at my exhibit last uh, week, almost over a week ago, um, one of the people came to me and said, um, my husband is the principal of a private school and it's just a private school and 90% um, of the scholars are autistic. And I'm thinking to myself, okay. So my guess is that because we we're in this culture where the public schools are like, well, if we just apply enough pressure, they'll be less autistic and that doesn't work. The parents are like, how are we going to get the appropriate, you know, model of, of education for our scholars who just operate differently or think differently or whatever? Like we can still learn. I mean, come on. 
just like you said, just put the goldfish in the water. He'll be really good. And so, <laughs> and so, you know, there, people are really getting hungry for this. And I'm like, did you know that I'm not the only adult autism advocate, you know, autistic advocate? I mean, I have a whole network of them. I'm going to, you know, I'll share them all with you. So it's, it's, I love to see the, I see the struggle and that's painful to see, but I also see the movement forward. I, wow, I move my hands a lot when I talk. Um, I still see the movement forward um, and it's good. Yeah, I think uh, there's still so much to be done, but it's so great to see individuals like yourselves and uh, so many more people out there stepping forward and being confident enough to say, hey, you know what, I'm different, which is OK, um, as opposed to, you know, uh, climbing under a rock because you feel, you know, why you know, I don't want to be seen as different. Um, so uh, the world is a magical place. And I think there's still so much for us to be able to go out and and bring out and, uh, um, you know, Joel and yourself are making making those little splashes in the water that ultimately will make those big differences yeah i absolutely agree yeah yes um i was trying i, was, I spent the uh, the uh, last five minutes trying to find your patreon page to drop it in the link and uh, oh thank you <laughs> i forgot i'm logged in already on patreon so it won't show me that <laughs> that's okay um it's it doesn't help that I, I've learned autocorrect actually will switch the spelling of my last name to Herbert. So I'm used to seeing it, you know, half the time it's, it's Herbert, it's Amanda Hebert Hughes. So it's, it's patreon.com slash Amanda Hebert Hughes. We could, um, we can maybe drop it in later or something like that. Yeah, I'll drop it in later. I mean, I, I was trying to find it and it kept, it kept taking me to our own Patreon page, which I'm like, <laughs> Not now. <laughs> yeah, well, speaking of your Patreon page, we want to make sure people know about that too. Yes. Um, but yours, obviously, first, because obviously you, you've got um, your art is, uh, for wanting a better word, outstanding. Thank and um, I'm, sure, I'm sure Matt will agree with me on that one. And... I don't quite know what he's looking at the ceiling for, but um... that that was weird. I was just looking at myself. There was a slight delay. I literally lifted my head, and it stayed there. And then, <laughs> and then I was nodding all of a sudden. I was like, "That was an interesting delay." Have um, I cut out at all during this? Yeah. Time? Um, oh, that's surprising. Okay, good. No, all, almost, but not 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 uh, at one point, but not not terrible. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So I, I want to bring up some of the people's. I've been reading some of the comments, and this one from YouTube um, is a. Uh, I thought was very um, very nice and very um, appropriate. And I like that Jenny Rockstar. Absolutely, it is a great way. You know. Anytime I can communicate without having to find the right words, you know, that's, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And um, we've got another one from Lucia. Um, Mac, you can, you can take this one. Yeah. In HR, long. we, we speak of cultural informants in an organization. Uh, this is a great idea for building comfort and ease for people who are afraid of that which they do not understand. Yes, thank you for picking up on that. Yes, my art is a great segue into the autistic world. It's a great, um, it's, what is another word for uncontroversial? It's just a very disarming, great conversation starter for it, um, period, to start the conversation. It's a window really into the autistic world. Yeah, and and it's it's interesting the way you know what Lucia um, put there about the you know the cultural informants. I think that the 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 big problem that we face is that not all organisations have those cultural informants, those people that can um, almost uh, translate between the different styles of communication, um, and this is why we have such a big gap in um, 
you know, the, you know, I think it's, uh, what's it, Joel, 22% of people with autism are full-time employed. Yeah. I mean, that is, that is frightening. Um, and that's, and a lot of that comes down to a, a lack of education, people just not knowing how to communicate and how to support and enable those individuals to perform, um, you know, and just, uh, avoiding it uh, avoidance i think is one of the biggest um challenges we face is um or, or ignorance uh as well so you know this is where having more people in organizations that can enable um and one of the things i loved uh, about uh you know what both you uh, joel and amanda have said is about the, you know having people that are autistic helping with that process yeah. um because you know i've seen it so many times where where with the best intentions you know people that have got you know i've got family members that are uh, autistic as an example but me being the person who goes and communicates to an autistic per person based on my perception of the that's never going to be the perfect solution because ultimately I'm going on, on assumption of how, you know, um, I, I see things work, but the autistic person, you know, I spent, uh, what was it? F almost 10 hours in a car with Joel going mm. to have a look at this venue, um, about six months, Oh, almost eight months ago. And the conversation I was sitting there and I was like, wow, there's so many things that I didn't even realize you know, most autistic people like miss out on because of misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it, it, it there, there's, and this is why it's so important to have people that are autistic in the process to ensure that the, um, I mean, it's like having somebody who's never spoken, um, you know, Chinese as an example, and they are now, um, you know, standing there and translating uh, from Chinese to English, but they've never, like, they aren't Chinese themselves, they can't understand it. Yeah. It's like, you can't expect there to be a, a smooth translation. Right. Um, you need autistic managers, you need autistic people that are in leadership in a company. Not only will that make the company better, but it'll also help empower your people to be able to do what they do best. Yeah. yeah. And as, as we've already experienced, you know, people with autism have a... Um, an incredible way of being able to uh, and and i know you mentioned earlier where um you know, cut through some of the noise yeah if that makes sense yeah um and yeah the the whole sensor gating allows you to be able to almost streamline things a lot better than you know if it was me um as you saw earlier you know, i asked three questions in one it's like hey Mackie, you know, slow down um <laughs> and <laughs> And and this is what we need more of in business because we've, I think, held it, it's holding uh, development back massively. Yeah, it for sure. I mean, like, like Joel and I, like we're both running our own businesses, right? Like, think about what companies would be missing out on just by not hiring people like Joel and me because we're autistic. Like, well, whose loss is that? <laughs> <laughs> That's the world. Um, we've we, we've uh, we've got a compliment a few min a few min, a few uh, quite a, quite a long way back from um, well Joseph. He says this, Amanda. Oh, thank you, Joseph. <laughs> and it it, it it is it is uh, the art is 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 that uh, is amazing and. Um, I'm not normally one for traipsing around galleries, but with yours, I could. <laughs> oh, thank you. It's not overwhelming. No, it's also the ones around the one that currently in galleries. I'm like, that's nice, but I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> when I was uh, younger, it was like the. It seemed like the impression was if you could paint or draw something exactly the way it looked then you were a good artist and to me that's just it's i can do that i can do that really well but to me that's just being a really good copier <laughs> and and i just i don't feel like i'm i'm offering anything new no. and i'm not delivering what i really want to deliver to people visually 
No, art is art is self self expression and um, individual. Otherwise, it's called plagiarism. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, a famous painter actually said that. I can't remember. I think that actually might have been, um, it might have been Da Vinci. I think. Don't don't. I mean, Google it. Yeah, Google it. Every day. <laughs> Google I could it, yeah. be wrong. <laughs> so. Yeah. I have to throw in another question here because there's 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 another dimension of Amanda that we haven't quite mentioned, um, and uh, this is the literary side of things. And I thought, uh, you know, why oh. does mommy say no? Um, is I mean, firstly, I just l love the title, but can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, sure. So. Um, that is a, a book that I wrote and illustrated. Um, I was picked up by a traditional publisher. Uh, that book, first one, came out December of 2021, and I'm already under contract for a second one. So I'm officially a children's author illustrator series, which is Yay. just super cool. Thank you. And that is a book. Um, it's really geared toward preschoolers, but kids, I've seen kids seven, eight, nine even really engage with it. Um, it's a book about boundaries, but it comes from the first person perspective of the child. And so what I basically wanted to do was just using logic, helping young minds connect the dots of how boundaries are actually a form of love. Healthy boundaries are actually yeah. a form of love. And so uh, we just kind of face these first person frustrating situations. You know, the child's going along, having a happy day. Mommy says, no, wait, what? New scenario, you know, going along, everything's great. Mommy says, no, what? And then the middle of the book, the frustration builds and it's, why does mommy say no? And then it revisits all of the scenarios and connects the dots and it has a sweet little surprise ending. So I won't ruin it, but you can order it from, um, uh, thanks for thanks for mentioning this, Mac. You can order it from bannersnatchbooks.com, which is my publisher. Um, you can also get it on Amazon. And if you don't, if you can't pay international shipping or that causes an inconvenience, you can even get it in digital format on Amazon. Um, oh, and wow. mommy, why does mommy say wait is currently in the works. I actually have you can't see it, but my workstation is spread out. I'm in the middle of illustrating that. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I'll be the first person to place an order straight after this uh, conversation. Oh, uh, thank yes. you. <laughs> and I'll, uh, and, I'll, and I'll, do, I'll do the second. We've got Amazon Prime. We might as well use it. <laughs> <laughs> there, and, and by the way, in the front of that book, it says about the author, Amanda is an autistic author. So I'm making sure that the babies know there's autistic people doing stuff out there, you know, things they love. So and speaking of that, I mean, I've noticed some people prefer one way person with autism. Um, what, what is, what, what, in your opinion, what is the, what should be the um, normal, um, well, the generalized standard? Yeah. Because we've we've I've I've been on Facebook forums which no the puzzle piece is bad. I'm not an autistic person. I'm a person who has autism, right. um, and so I, I what is before society goes all woke on this as well. What um... <laughs> <laughs> well because I've gotten most of my autism education and uh yeah information from other autistic adults i do find that each autistic individual has their own preference and i think that some people like sometimes i call myself aspie and i think i'm being cute because to me that's cute but for some people that's offensive to them and so it, it kind of depends on what kind of stigma of autism you've really been exposed to I think most of your life, it depends on, you know, if you've undergone some really traumatic, traumatic treatments or, or whatever, it really depends on your story. Um, for me, I'm fine being called autistic because I, I don't believe it's, it's like a, a side order kind of condition that's with me. I just see that it's part of me. It makes up who I am. It's how I operate and how I tick. So I'm okay with calling myself autistic. 
Um, I, when I'm referring to anybody else, um, I do try to be sensitive to, you know, how they want to be referred to as, because, you know, the, the stigma and, you know, autism, as we know it up to this point has been tough. Yeah, it had, it had been tough. Yeah, I think it's, it's interesting that you put that and that's such an important point to have a look at it from where that person's perspective comes from, because, um, you know, that, that personal makeup is so important, you know, people that associate uh, differently, um, you know, as an example, if it's somebody who, who's always had the autism show up as a derogatory and a bad element in their life. And, and they've always felt um, that it's made them less of, then they may feel um, offended by having that term associated with them. Absolutely. Um, so, so we've got to be sensitive to, you know, and this is where just because I might be okay or you might be okay with it, other people may not. So it's just being sensitive to how people um, want to be, uh, you know, um, uh, what's the word labeled potentially identified yeah and identified yeah yeah i agree uh, yeah we've had a, a comment from john um here we, amanda do you want me to read that to, can, can, no can you speak a bit about the process i'm mean, only just going into that bit because i'm not reading the whole thing okay hey john by the way who's watching um okay cool distill scenes into a quintessential color and texture. Can you speak a bit about that process? Do you see it that way? Is there a specific process? Yes. Oh, good question, John. You always have good questions. So let's take, for instance, so the collection that I just did for my exhibit, um, the remaking the famous paintings, that was actually um, a good exercise for me to try to help people see how uh, sensory gated artwork uh, works when I'm actually translating something that everybody can see into a piece of sensory gated art. Um, and so what I'm, what I'm looking for, John, when I'm turning something into sensory gated art is I'm looking for the um, really stripping something down to its bare uh, core qualities um, the, the minimal lines, the colors and the texture is what I'll put in to, at the end to balance it out. I'm looking for the fewest lines that will trigger the brain to know what it's looking at without putting in all it's, it's like a decomposition, but the, the brain can still recognize the image when it's done. It just doesn't have to filter out all of the extra. So I have to be very specific about what lines I'm using, the colors I'm mixing, I'm really specific about that. Um, and then obviously the texture at the end just and anchors the piece so that, cause yeah, we do have some lines going this way and that way and the texture blocks give the place for an eye to land. And that's just, that's just my uh, token that I have incorporated into sensory gated art is that texture. So I hope that answers the question specifically. Yeah, th thank you, John. That was a, that was an extremely good question. Um, and Lucia has been advocating your Twitter, Amanda. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm not on. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know. I don't look at that, everybody. I don't know what that is. <laughs> I better get on Twitter. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what's what's her name? Is that Lucia? Lucia, Lucia, Lucia Harper. Harper. Yeah. Lucia. Yeah. Thank you, Lucia. I'll have to check that out. <laughs> uh, John, again. Oh, thank, thank you so John. much, John, for your question. Do we have any more questions before um, we wrap up in the next six minutes? I have a surprise for you guys, actually. Oh, you do like surprises. Okay, you ready for the surprise? Okay. So for everybody watching, I'm assuming you've been following Rockstar X's work, as have I. And they have got their Patreon page going. And that's a really important part of them continuing the work that they're doing. And so 
I am going to say that the first person to become a Patreon patron of Rockstar X between now, 11.51 a.m. Eastern time, and the end of the weekend, the first person to become a Patreon patron is going to get to choose from one of these four original sensory gated art paintings that I have done. There's one, two, these are my personal collection. These are not available for sale in my gallery. So I'm gonna let them choose. So that means if somebody logs in right now and goes yeah. and becomes a Patreon patron of Rockstar X right now, you'll probably be the first. <laughs> It, and this one, and I'll even pay for shipping up to forty dollars, and that'll even carry it as far as Australia. <laughs> that is pretty cool. Oh wow, these are worth amazing. at least two hundred and fifty dollars a piece. It's the Those it's are exquisite. Amazing. Thank you. Yes, they're awesome. Actually, yeah. So you heard Amanda. Um, <laughs> Who I haven't even work? done this for my own patrons, which I will work on, but this is Rockstar <laughs> X exclusive. You, you, seriously, you should do for your own as well. Absolutely. I will, but you guys are the first. <laughs> that is and, incredible. And we should we should uh, we should at some point do something back for yours as well. Um uh, thoughts on that, Mac? We'll brainstorm later. <laughs> I've got a few thoughts on that, uh, but I'll, I'll run that past you afterwards, Joel. That's right. Yeah. So anyone who who will who sign who signs up to any uh, any of the any of the tiers, are we doing or, or just uh, select ones? Yeah. I, I'd say any of the tiers. Go any for of the it. tiers. Um, that means you could potentially get a um, two hundred and fifty dollar. Um, original art for twenty four dollars a month. That's right, <laughs> and the value of these are going up. So this is going to grow in does. value. All my art does so far. So the art does grow in value, and um, yes, it does grow in value. That's pretty so, awesome. Do you want me to um, do a little art show? I'll give you a little bit close up again. <laughs> you can see the texture. And uh, yes, we've also, cool. we've also got a Giving Tuesday event, um, pre-event happening on the November 3rd, before which we'll be going into a lot more detail with that um, for November 29th. So, Joel, before we wrap up, I wanted to just get Amanda to tell us you know, about some of the things that she's working on at the moment that people can go and follow on, like wh how, what are the best places to find her, um, and how do you want people to connect with you? Oh, thank you. Um, so I'm active on Instagram and Facebook and uh, obviously LinkedIn. I love LinkedIn. Um, I post at least once a day, often multiple times a day. So that's a really fun way to just kind of fill your life with art. Uh, you get to just passively enjoy it as it drifts through your feed um, on Instagram or Facebook. I'm also on YouTube. Um, I have a really cool YouTube episode. But to find all those links, probably the easiest place to go is my website, which is sensorygatedart.com. I can put that stuff. in the. I can put that in the um in the, in the in the ticker on the on the back on the uh, screen. Um, Excellent. Haven't didn't prepare this one, so this is uh, coming straight off now while I'm typing and there we go. Uh, am I correct, Amanda? Oh, let me go to that comments uh, screen. Let's see. It's not in the comments. It's on. It's going. It's scrolling across the bottom of the video. Oh, okay. Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so go to that website and the way you can check out Amanda's um one uh, amazing work and uh, future work as well. Thank you. Yes, right now I'm working on um, the sensory gated art piece I'm working on right now is Hendrix Lottie Mama, 
That is actually a remake of a famous painting um, that's been commissioned by a very wonderful collector. And so I'm showing the progress of that uh, right now. Awesome. Awesome stuff. So when that do we get so to see your, your work in Tate Modern? <laughs> What's that? When do we get to see your work in the Tate Modern Gallery in London? As soon as they send me an invitation and pay my airfare. <laughs> okay. So if anybody is watching this and you've got connections in the Tate Modern, let's make that happen. I'm uh, amazed because, you don't, Mark. Uh, well, uh, you never know. I've got lots of people in my in my in my network. Um, I'm just not sure if I've got somebody in the Tate Modern. But let's let's see if we can make little miracles happen and uh, get uh, Amanda to come and visit the UK. Oh wow! Thank you. <laughs> yes, let's let's make that happen, people. Oh. I'm going to be spamming the Tate Modern uh, on your LinkedIn and making sure I tag uh, them in every single post that I see of yours just so that they can have you on the radar over the next oh, few months. Thank you. <laughs> I'm putting I'm putting this up, Mac, to cover a bit of your face so everyone can see the um, how to contact the uh, artist. Awesome. Yes, um, and I didn't answer that question. I'm sorry, uh, Mac. Thank you, Joel, for reminding me. Uh, people can message me on LinkedIn or they can just send me an email. My email address is right on my website. That's probably the fastest way um, to reach me. Um, I love to write back and forth and get to know my collectors personally. Awesome. I thought that's, that's, that's awesome. Uh, uh, Mac, is go Mac, uh, I don't think this one should be... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but good question, Ruth. Um, yeah. At this point, I've got no idea right now, and I really don't give two flying um, monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, Amanda, it's been such a privilege and a it pleasure has. to uh, interview you it and really uh, see oh. the face and the smile behind this incredible artwork as well. Oh, thank um, you guys so much. I was really looking forward to this. You guys are awesome. Oh, and also meeting your puppy. Um, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know where, where the puppy's gone, but um, yeah, uh, thank you so much for uh, yeah making thank my you. day there as well. So awesome! Thank, thank you. you guys. Love following your work. Keep it up. Thank you. Excellent you stuff. Too. Well, listen, incredible week to all, and thank you all for watching. Um, please drop in in the comments any questions you have for for future for Amanda or for Joel, or just drop in where you're joining us from, um, and uh, you know we'll make sure that we respond and uh, look you. forward to following everybody. Thank you so much, you too, people, and have a great week or rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent.